I'm joined by Martin this afternoon, who is joining us from St. Agnes. And Martin owns a company called Evolution. So Martin, I'll hand over to you if you'd like to tell us what it is you do, um, how long you've been running the business and the services which you offer. Okay. Um, essentially, what we do is we help uh, individuals and organisations realise their potential to help you become the best you you can be, whether that's as an individual or as an organisation. Um, our, our full uh, company title is Evolution Personal and Corporate Development Limited. So it does what it says on the tin, essentially. And um, we've been in business for 26 years now. Um, so quite a while we moved, we were initially in Northwest and we relocated to Cornwall in 1999, so uh, March 99. Uh, and I actually relocated the business in sort of January 2020. So 20, 2000, not 2020, January okay. 2000. Yeah. <laughs> Big difference. Um, it was a very long time ago anyway, and I've kind of forgotten uh, all yeah. the details about it. So um, what we offer is everything from helping organisations with their um, vision and strategy, um, helping them with their purpose, because, you know, obviously it's a big thing now is that, you know, businesses should be purpose driven businesses. And we've been banging on about that for 26 years. So um, we've got processes that can really help you define your purpose in a really positive and powerful way. So, you know, moving from um, what you might perceive your purpose to be, uh, there was a, we were working with a procurement team at Derryford Hospital who perceived their procurement as procuring goods and services at best value to the trust. And then when we went through our process, they perceived their purpose as to help save lives, which is obviously a very different yeah. um, idea in terms mm -hmm. of it being aspirational and inspirational. So we've got a process that can really help every organisation do that. And we've worked public, private sector, third sector, just helping organisations with that. Mm -hmm. And we can follow that up with all sorts of training and development. So leadership programmes. Um, I'm an NLP master trainer, so we do NLP training and been doing that for 25 years now. Um, and we do sort of sales training, customer service training, anything that involves interactions uh, with other people, whether that be customers or internally. So we can help with things like motivation and um, delegation and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we also provide coaching service. So I've currently got, I think, somewhere in a region of 60 coaching clients around the UK. Um, which obviously, you know, Zoom has, has helped me to increase that dramatically because um, I'm working with somebody this morning from London. Um, and then when we finish this, I'll be working with somebody from Cumbria. So, oh. you know, it would have been quite a difficult thing to go and meet them in person on the same yeah. day, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, that's sort of what we do. Uh, we also, I also work uh, as a life coach as well. And also I'm a hypnotherapist. So I do therapy work and stuff as well. So, yeah. Fantastic. A great spectrum to cover. Um, and I guess it feels like you're, I guess I was going to say giving back to the county, but actually, you know, you're not, you're giving back to more than just that because you have got clients all over the UK, which is fantastic. And Europe. Yeah. yeah and, and Europe. Europe. So yeah. I've done a lot of negotiation training in Europe as well. So um, yeah, that was pre-COVID to be fair. I'm yeah. still doing some in Europe, but obviously mm -hmm. I'm not traveling yet. Yeah, we're going to talk about COVID now, actually. <laughs> but obviously, <laughs> you're um, very, you've so got 26 years, you're a very well-established company. Um, but how how was working through the pandemic for you? Did you have to make any changes? Did the company shut down? Were you, were you still operating? Well, in, initially, it was a complete nightmare because we were looking at um, potentially our best year for the last 26 years, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, certain, well, certainly since 2008. And... Um, it all went within two days, literally. Uh, we lost all of that business. Uh, we also fell through all of the kind of government funding gaps because, you know, it, it's a um, we're a limited company, mm -hmm. so I still had to work, so I couldn't, you know, so it was all that, all, all those yeah. kind of rules. Um, but what we did have to do, obviously, was just change the business model. And um, something I'd been working on for about a year prior to COVID was to develop an online academy. And I'd spent a lot of time and just created one course. And I thought, this just isn't going to work. Um, so what it meant was it gave me the opportunity. And I spent essentially two years sat in front of the camera. Um, mm -hmm. And we launched our online academy earlier this year. Uh, during COVID, I did a lot of work around helping people make the transition to working from home. So a lot of coaching, a lot of webinars on things like personal resilience and um, how to work from home and still be effective. Uh, and that and that kind of then started to transition into doing some leadership development. I continued the NLP training um, because we, we'd started to use Zoom. We'd been working face to face and we yeah. had to transition to Zoom. Um, and that also I, cre I 
recorded all that content online as well. So it was a real opportunity in a sense, although we just lost all that income, it was an opportunity to uh, create this online academy that I've been thinking about for years. And so it's there. We've got about 18 courses on it now. We've got, it's, we launched it in April, I think. Um, and we've got about 200 users at the moment um, already. So they're a mix of individual members so you can you can join it as a membership site and you pay a monthly amount and access to different amounts of training um and we've got a lot of corporate users so um and we we kind of blend the training a lot now so like with the leadership program we run um all the contents online so there's we've got one client who we um we uh, did an introduction we did a couple of sessions and some coaching and then they looked at all the content we've got another client who just bought all the content um i did an introductory day and they're facilitating it all in-house themselves mm. so there's a real opportunity to be flexible with the, the delivery now so it's it's really exciting mm. so predominantly most of your clients is it sort of are you dealing with um sort of one-man bands are you b2b b2c how are you sort of you're very varied no absolutely anybody and everybody um so ranging from one-man bands um up to i'm currently working with defra um and the nhs doing some leadership programs for them so you know from a from a public sector private mm. sector i work with people like the red cross and um cornwall museums partnership mm -hmm. and uh, air ambulance and stuff over the years so very much so anybody really essentially because yeah. at the end of the day um any business is a bunch of people who talk to each other and get things done and, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter whether that's public private third sector one man band whatever it is mm -hmm. it's all about the way that you interact that that helps you actually achieve what you want to achieve or not really mm -hmm. yeah and then how about evolution itself is it just you working at the business or are there other people as part of your team well, the, the model at the moment is um, we use associates as we need to, so yep. self-employed associates. Mm -hmm. um, we've got, there's me, there's um, a bookkeeper and um, marketing person. Um, yeah. So so that's the kind of core of the business. Uh, and then, like I say, we use really highly qualified, experienced people when we need to. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And then I guess talking about the future of the business and your team, where do you sort of, where do you see your business journey taking you in the next five years? Well, one of the interesting things at the moment, we just came off a call and we're setting up a collaboration. So I've got sort of three or four collaborations that are potentially really kind of interesting, big projects. Yeah. Um, so I can see that I can see a lot of growth for us over the next um, few years, particularly with the mix of um, online coaching and the online academy, which is growing all the time. We're constantly mm -hmm. putting new content on their new courses and things. So it gives a lot of people access from all over the world. So certainly we're going to be expanding more kind of globally. So the first webinar I ran in lockdown, I had people from Saudi Arabia and China on and then some NLP training I did. I had somebody from Puerto Rico and someone from Germany and someone from Scotland as well. Wow, so, fantastic. you know, it is starting to because to, it breaks down those kind of barriers. So mm -hmm. I can see us growing in those areas. I can see the collaborations growing and, and being really positive. Um, quite, I'm really excited about those. There's three at the moment that, that are really potentially good stuff yeah. uh, in all sorts of different areas. That's um, I think that's great, especially when you consider with the Cornwall and you're just from St. Agnes that you've got such a great reach. And, you know, as you say, it started off like being national, but actually you've got global reach and people mm -hmm. that are interested, which is fantastic. Yeah. yeah and, and all sorts of sectors, you know, mm -hmm. like I say, not just about public private, but manufacturing, food manufacture, um, hospitality, you know, just it doesn't matter. And I've got a, a wealth of experience in all of those areas. Um, and you know, over the years, you know, because my background's manufacturing anyway, so I understand yeah. manufacturing. Uh, but also, you know, I've worked with um, in Cornwall people like Rodders and a proper Cornish, you know, to Withen. So that sort of um, food production, I, I really get and understand. Uh, as long as with some, uh, you know, some tech companies, and mm -hmm. so it, it doesn't matter because people are still people, and that's the, the important bit. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you do; it's how you do it that makes the difference. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the the best of Cornwall when you mentioned Rod is there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and do you have any do you have any business advice about somebody that was thinking about taking taking a journey on for themselves and becoming a business? Yeah, I would say it's one of the biggest problems is that the um, not problems, but I guess 
typically what happens is somebody who's good at something sets themselves up in a business at it. Mm-hmm. And um, the, there's a kind of entrepreneur myth that, that you know, the entrepreneurs are, are a typical type of person, but generally they're good technicians who decide to go it alone. And the really important bit is the, is the interpersonal stuff. So the, the higher up an organization you go, the less you need the technical skills, but the more you need the interpersonal skills. Mm-hmm. And if you're starting up as a one-man band, you need both of those. It's not enough to be be fantastic at what you do. You have to be able to market it. You have to be able to communicate about it. You've got to be able to recruit and train and motivate and lead the people within the business as well. So those are the things that people people often miss. You know, it's, it's, you need the financial acumen, you need the marketing mm-hmm. stuff, but what you really, really need is the people skills if you want to grow it. Yeah. Fantastic. And then I guess that's advice. But then similarly, do you have sort of two top tips, which would be great takeaways from today? Awesome. Uh, yeah. Define your purpose. Yeah. Um, that's the really, really important bit. And look after the people. Nice. There's those two things. Yeah. I guess there's no business without any people. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. People forget that a lot, I think. Yeah. <laughs>